Here we go. to you well now the sooner we get the Florida State game out of our mouths the better and this week our opponent is the Duke Blue Devils uh, up in Durham North Carolina it'll be Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern Time be on ESPN3.com um, thing about Duke you know this is a this is a team that you know this, this is a team, you know, we have to bounce back after a very, very bad loss at home last Saturday night against Florida State at home. I think you know the drill by that, the, the drill about that. Uh, Duke's 1-4. This is the perfect time to get back on track. Uh, they had a bye week after the loss against Maryland. When, let me tell you when we last saw Duke. Duke's won, you know, it's one and four. Their only one came against Elon in the season opener before getting dropped, getting beat by Wake Forest, then destroyed by Bama, Army in their last game against Maryland. But let's make no mistake, folks. This is this is one of the nation's most productive passing teams. Even though Lewis is gone, you know, they have a quarter, very good quarterback in Sean Renfro, who's second in the conference in passing average and total offense. But he has thrown nine interceptions while throwing ten touchdown passes. His top target, you know, they're going to have to deal with is Connor Vernon. He leads the team in, in and the conference in catches and receiving yards, so we're going to have to account for him. And Donovan Varner, who, had, who has 386 yards on 31 catches, as well as Austin Kelly, who has 269 yards on 25 catches. You know, so, but the, their best, their best, their other top player is Desmond Scott. You know who had on the ground who has 51 carries, 291 yards, but they also relied on Snead and Brandon Connett in the running game. You look at Duke defensively. The thing you know they have Abraham Cromar who has 20 solo tackles and 26 assisted tackles for 46 overall. Um, he leads he leads in total tackles. He leads in solo tackles with 20, and he has four tackles for loss. Uh, Matt Daniels has 34 tackles. He's second, and Chris. Chris R. I'm not going to dare pronounce his name. Uh, 18 tackles, one interception. He's, he leads their secondary. While Patrick Ebo and Charlie Hatcher are standouts on the D line. Uh, one of the top kickers in the country they have is Will Snyderwine. He's nine for ten field goal attempts and four for four inside 30 yards, and really, and in two for two inside of 40, and pass. And he's only missed one field goal all year, and that was. In, I was from 40 yards and out. Um, he's also perfect in extra points, 16 for 16, and he handles punts for the. And Alex King handles the punts, and he averages 43 yards a boot. You know, we we lead, even though we lost to Florida State, we still lead the nation in tackle for losses right now. Um, the thing with Duke is that when we last saw these guys, you know, this was a team, you know. When we last met up there, we won 49-31 in 08. We won 34-16 last year, but that was misleading because we had to come back against these guys to win. 
We're perfect in the ACC against Duke 4 0. We lead 6 to 1 in their all time against them. And the thing, you know, when you look at Duke, you know, Cut's got them going, but see, the thing with Cut, you know, is this is a, this is a team that we should have no, no excuses destroying this week. You know, you need, we need to understand we have to, we, if we're going to start the road back to run the table the rest of the way, it's got to start this Saturday against Duke up in Wallace Wade Stadium in Winston-Salem, in, in uh, North Carolina, in Durham, North Carolina. When you look at Duke, here's the thing that really gets me about them. You know, the team that has not done well this year, you know, you look at them, this is a team, and you look, when you look at them on, when I look at them, uh, and I'll do that in the next segment. But when you look at, when you see Duke statistically, then this is a team, you know, that's terrible. You know, even though Cuts had, Cuts had a tough time up there, you know. And, of course, I'll play Cuts press conference um, a little later in the next segment as well. But, uh, you know, when you look at the, the statistics for them this year, this is a team you have to think, you know, this is a team we should absolutely destroy this week without question. In the four losses, they had a tough loss against Maryland up in College Park before the bye week. They lost to Army. This is a team that got got, got destroyed by Alabama, but who doesn't get destroyed by Alabama? That's all South Carolina, but hey. And then this is a, this is a team that only won, that won their season over against Elon, but it's absolutely stunk and comp, stunk. You know, they're 0-2 in the conference, 1-4 overall. This is a team we should have absolutely no trouble beating this week. You know, this is a team, if we're going to, this is, I always say this is the perfect tonic to come off an embarrassing loss. We're going to go up to Wallace Way Stadium angry. We're going to go up there determined to get that Florida State taste out of our mouths. And this, like I said, the sooner we do that, the better. So, that's the way I see it this week. So, I think I'm going to do in the next segment is I'm going to play some press comps, clips from Randy Shannon, from David Cutcliffe, from his presser, and I'm going to play um, some highlights from Duke from Duke's last game against Maryland, and I'm going to show uh, here all the low lights again. Of the, of the Florida State fiasco and then, I'll, then we'll start talking more about Duke so next segment I'm going to talk about the, we're going to open the chat room and let's talk about this game against Duke this Saturday <laughs> 